Hey everyone and welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name's Emma and here at Beast Books and Beauty we talk about what's getting on with all of my various animals, the books I love to read and occasionally the odd makeup look just to break things up. So today's video is going to be my May wrap up and I'm super proud of my May wrap up because I read 15 books. 15 books. This is the best month I've had this year by far because I think before that, like we we knew we had wrap ups where there was like one or two books and three or four books and 15. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with myself. Now, admittedly, a lot of these were audiobooks, but there's no shame there. And a few were some kids books, but I don't care. I read 15 books in a month and I'm feeling pretty damn good about it. So I am gonna take you through all of the books that I read this month and let you know what I thought of them. And then I'm also going to do my Tackle the TBR prompt for June, which I pick a prompt from my little jar there, and we'll see which book fits the prompt for June. So I'm not gonna talk about the books in the order I read them like I normally would. I'm gonna talk about them kind of grouped in sort of series um, or genre type thing, because there are a few that are a part of a series. I've got notes in front of me there, if you're wondering, I keep looking down. Um, so I, I'm gonna group them kind of based on like, what series they're involved instead of the order I read them in. So we're gonna start off with two of my five star reads for the month. So this month had a really good, good quality reads in it. Most of my reads for this month were four star, about 11 of them, I think. Um, we had three five star, which I will get to, and one two star, which was the lowest by far. <laughs> um, definitely the weakest read. I will start with two of the five star books and let you know my thoughts on those. The first of these five star reads was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. So obviously this is not a new book. <laughs> this book has been around for quite some time now and I always had it on my TBR. I wanted to read it. I even actually got it out from the library a couple of years ago and read a couple of pages and then it went back to the library and I never picked it up again. But then Maddie from Boot Browsing Vlog and a few other booktubers were doing Strange a lot. So Strange the Dreamer and then the sequel, Muse of Nightmares, were gonna be read um, in April and May of this year. Um, and I, I finished this one just in May. So that's why it's being included in this wrap up and not April's wrap up. Um, but yeah, I, I adored this book. Um, this is the story of Laszlo Strange, who is an orphan and he loves to learn and read and he's obsessed with the lost city of Weep. And then he gets the chance to go and find Weep and possibly help them solve the problem. And he, it's all his dreams have come at once that he gets to go and find out about the city that has always um, fascinated him. And this book is beautiful. It's lyrical and whimsical and beautifully written. And the characters are fantastic. And the romance is adorable. And, oh, I can't praise this book highly enough. I am annoyed at myself for not reading it properly sooner. Um, but very grateful for uh, Strange Along for pushing me to finally read it. Um, I adored it. I absolutely adored it. It is one of my favourite books of all time after reading this book. So I just think it's wonderful. And then of course, May's book <laughs> for Strange Along was Muse of Nightmares, which is book two in the duology. And Muse picks up pretty much where Strange the Dreamer ends. Big cliffhanger ending on that one, I should say. You can't really read the first one, then leave it unless you're crazy person. <laughs> um, Muse of Nightmares picks up straight um, straight away um, where the last book ends and where this one is very slow paced and beautiful and just something, well, it's just something else. This one is different in vibes. It's a lot faster. It's a lot more action filled. So much is happening. A lot of pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Um, it's still beautifully written but the vibe is completely different. Like it's it it's like that's the calm before the storm. And this book was also amazing in a way that it was very, very different. It was so complimentary to the first one. I absolutely bloody adored it. I cannot stress it enough. Another five star read. Some of the characters in this book were ones that you probably didn't warm to, or at least I didn't warm to that much in Strange, but then you got their development in this one. And wow, just absolutely wow. I, I just love it. I love this book. I love this duology. I am now obsessed with Lainey Taylor and I am searching hardback copies of um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone to read and I might 
get hardbacks of these as well just because I now absolutely adore them and kind of want multiple editions of the same book which is crazy but I, I love I love this and I'm trying to convince my fiance to read them because they're just now such strong favourites to me. My only concern with getting the fiance to read them is that he points out things in books that I don't notice and then he he spoils them and um, he's sitting over there and he might laugh and uh, he is grinning over there and um, so he does spoil them so if he does that with this book I might kill him because I like this book so much but anyway I am hoping he will eventually read it and love it as much as I do but we shall see and um, but yeah absolutely adored it both of these books were five stars for me um so glad I read them absolutely adored coming down off the five star reads let's just get the two star out of the way because we just need to buffer that with you know but a bit of get the bad out of it after the good so the book i'm talking about is rekindled prophecy i am this is by casey friedman i'll put a picture up on the screen as i have this as an ebook and i got this from brook sirens um in exchange for a review and Oh, I had some trouble with this book. When I first requested it, it sounded so interesting to me. The general plot is um, regarding guardian angels and basically these these guardians are, are looking after humans that are going through some hard times and things like that. And, and that's fair enough. I was quite curious. It was meant to be a paranormal romance and it, something about it spoke to me when I requested this book. Um, it was bad. It was very disappointing. I did not enjoy this book at all. Um, basically, the main character is called Graylin, and she it starts off with her being kind of trained as an as a guardian angel, and then follows her a little bit briefly through the centuries, bit popping in the, in and out of her life, and then to present day, where she is taking some uh, time off from her duties and um, going to stay in a place where she she enjoys to relax and ends up having to defend a wedding against her um, arch nemesis who is a dark guardian which is basically just like the opposite of a guardian angel um, and this is a, an enemy she's had through the centuries it's always trying to mess up her saving people so when she sees them at this wedding she's like well you're clearly up to no good I need to do something to stop you um this is the person she is to have her romance with um romance um yeah so the story the plot is weak the plot is very very weak it is it's going to be a series or it is already a series i'm not sure if there's other ones already out or not i don't care to find out i'm not carrying on if you can't tell from the tone um the plot's very very weak it's definitely suffering from being the first book in a series where it's setting up the characters for the series, but it's not good enough on its own to actually make me want to read anymore. Um, the characters are boring. There's no there's no depth to them. There's no development to them. There's a lot of action scenes that are very very Buffy reminiscent, which I'm a massive Buffy stan. Like I love Buffy, but my guinea pigs are fighting. But um, there's nothing attaching me to these characters. They were just so flat um didn't enjoy uh, there were some glimmers of talking about a prophecy naturally it's called rekindled prophecy there is a prophecy in there the prophecy is very very scratched the surface of kind of in this book and i imagine it will continue forward there were bits with like a seer who was seeing things for the future and she was interesting i actually i liked her parts i can't for the life of me remember her name but i liked her parts they were they were the most unique about the book the romance aspect was non-existent. Um, I don't know whether that was poor marketing or, or what. Um, but there was there was meant there was chemistry between the two characters in a very, you know, let's just state that there was chemistry kind of way. Um, but there was nothing more than that. They did not have any kind of romance in this book. Um, I don't really get. I just don't get it. I didn't like it. Uh, it was a two star. The writing was boring. The plot was boring. The characters were not naff. I just did not enjoy. I uh, I can't say I would recommend this one, and I'm not continuing with the series. And it was by far my letdown read of the month. Now I probably should have DNF this because I started reading it, and it was one of my goals for do the thingathon to finish some of my currently reading books on Goodreads. And this was one of them that had been languishing there for a while because I started it and put it down, started it and put it down. You could just never focus on it. I should have just DNF'd it. 
but I didn't. I completed it and I'm glad it's gone and I can now write the review and that's fine. But I didn't enjoy the book. My only satisfaction is now the fact that it's it's over. And after talking about it here, I probably don't have to mention it ever again. So that one can toddle off. Let's get back into some of the four stars. Most of these books are part of series. And in the fact that they're part of series, I can't say too much about them because obviously, spoilers. But I will give little overviews for each one. First little handful of books I will chat to you about are the ones that are part of the children's series I will be talking about. Now, I did a video, I will link it up there, um, about re sort of reminiscing of favourite books from my childhood. And some of the books that I mentioned were the Dolphin Diaries series. Uh, this is by Lucy Daniels and I adored them. This is the author of Animal Ark and I adored her books growing up. Like I say, I kind of gushed about her um, quite profusely in that video. And then I decided to do a bit of a reading vlog just to see if the old faves kind of stood the test of time. And this is four of them. So obviously these are very short, very easy to read. They're children's, they're not even middle grade. Um, they're about dolphins and this family going around um, on a boat studying them and little spoiler for the vlog, they were so cute. Um, I liked them just as much as I did when I was younger. Um, but I'm not finished reading this series and there's a few other books that I want to get to before I finish up that vlog. But I would just thought I'd point out that this was four of the books that I read this month and they are, they're such, such, such cute little books. I, I do really adore them. Um, so the first one is the family setting off on their journey, um, going around the world studying dolphins in the wild. Um, the second one is when they are kind of going to different research facilities and meeting some of the dolphins that are doing therapy sessions. Um, the third one is to do, I'm dropping them everywhere. The third one is meeting Atlantic, Atlantic spotted dolphins and there's a bit of treasure hunting going on. And then the one, last one here is another kind of facility um, called Dolphin Haven and there are some pregnant dolphins. So dolphin babies in this one. So yeah, super wholesome, educational, great. I adore them as a child and I adore them as an adult. And watch that vlog if you want to see more in depth thoughts. So the next series that I massively tackled this month was the DCI Tom Douglas series by Rachel Abbott. This series um, is one that I started, it must be a couple of years ago now. And I picked up an audiobook here and there and just kind of talked my way through it. Um, obviously the main character in them is DCI Tom Douglas and it's kind of follows him throughout many cases here and there. Um, none of them are particularly like cliffhanger -y endings. You don't have to rush to the next one. They're just kind of thrillers based around this, this policeman. Um, so I, last month, I read Kill Me Again, which is number five. And then I thought, hey, hold on. I bet my boyfriend might like to listen to some of these with me because we listen to the Maeve Kerrigan series by Jane Casey and we are waiting impatiently for her next book that I think has been delayed, which is a bit annoying. But anywho, it's a similar kind of idea. So I decided to restart the series and we were going to buddy read the series together and chat about them and things like that. So that's what we did this month. And he reads at a lot faster pace than I do. He gets very obsessed with the books that he's reading and he just literally barrels through them. So I was finishing a book every day, day and a half in this series. It's probably why my count of books is so high this month because I had him kind of, us reading them together made the, me read them faster. So I'll give a little um, summary of the books. Um, like I say, they're in a series, so I'll just give brief overviews of them. And as I talk about them, I'll put their corresponding picture up next to me. So the first one in the series I read last month, which was only The Innocents, and we continued that reread this month with The Back Road. And in this one, DCI Tom Douglas is in his kind of second home, vacation home kind of a thing. And there is um, an incident with a hit and run and it's a small town. So it's someone in the town did this hit and run on this teenage girl. And it's basically them trying to figure out who did it. There are a lot of secrets in the small town. I really enjoyed it. I think it's one of the stronger books in the series. Um, and a couple of them end up being recurring characters as well, so which is pretty good. Um, the thing to note with this one is, although it is a police detective drama, kind of book thriller, the policeman doesn't actually feature very highly in this book at all. It's very much 
the reader finding out from the other characters as they are discovering things but not really the policeman investigating and finding it. He's not even on the case technically, he's just a character in this book, which I quite liked in the fact that it's a bit different, but also I was kind of wanting a bit more of him, you know, being a policeman. But it was a good book, I did enjoy it, and it all wrapped up quite well. So that was book number two, and I gave that a four stars. Book number three in the series is Sleep Tight, and this one follows um, a character called Olivia, and she's had a lot of rotten luck she's lost her I don't know, was it her boyfriend or her fiance um she's had other deaths in her family um and then she's got together with a new guy and then you know it seems as if her kids have gone missing and then that all turned out okay and then a few years later she's gone missing and this war woman just seems to have had such a run of bad luck and um tom douglas goes to investigate the case of her going missing this time um, her and the children have gone and no one knows where they are. So this one, again, quite an interesting one, a little bit different. I definitely enjoyed uh, reading this one. Um, putting it through Copile, it still came out as a four star. Um, but I could definitely say there's starting to be a pattern at this point with the books in the series where the, the female main character has a very similar vibe in each of the books um and it's definitely kind of coming through at this point you know having listening listened to them so close together whereas before i was listening to like maybe a book a year or something like that listening to them back to back you started to notice the much more similar aspects of the female character in in the series um i do feel like sh the same the, the character was very similarly written in, in a lot of these uh books um, so that would definitely be a flaw. Some parts of this one I think was a little bit convoluted, but equally I, I still found it fairly interesting and enjoyed it. And like I say, it came out as a four star on Copa. The next two I'm going to discuss, one is called Stranger Child and one is called Nowhere Child. Book number four is Stranger Child and there's a small novella called Nowhere Child that kind of wraps up a few loose ends from that book that doesn't get solved at the end of it. A Stranger Child is a story about there's this married couple with a young boy and the father, um, he his wife um, was previously killed in a car accident and his daughter vanished and it's been many many years since then and then the daughter reappears and are just on the doorstep and it's all a bit strange, she's come back, the father's very blind by the fact his daughter's come back and he's just willing to overlook any of the weirdness or where she's been or anything that's happened, he's just happy she's home and is not wanting to think about anything further. Whereas the character Emma, main character Emma, she's wanting to find out more about where she's been, she wants to contact the police and obviously let them know that she's been found as obviously she's a missing person. She's trying to be a lot more logical about it, she's also not sure if she can trust the new person like she's not sure if she can trust Natasha and obviously is concerned for her young boy so there's a bit of a kind of domestic situation there where they're trying to find their feet with this um daughter coming back from you know the past kind of a thing I think she must she was an early teens situation she's 13 14 something like that um so it is kind of that and there's a big there's a lot more deeper darker secrets involved on you know why the daughter went missing and what she's doing back and this one has a lot more input from tom douglas um um he actually knows the main character as that is the ex-partner of his brother um and i enjoyed this one because it definitely had more information in the characters kind of private lives which I really enjoy and I, I like kind of characters intertwining I really enjoy that kind of setup and I enjoyed this one quite a lot um again you could definitely say the female character of the mother being protective of her child not necessarily making the most sensible decisions definitely features in this one again um but again ran it through cough pile and it came to a four star similarly nowhere child follows on pretty much a few months after Stranger Child ends and is basically kind of, kind of rounding up the story, uh, the loose ends of the story with um, Emma and Natasha and that whole um, situation. And it was, it was a good, good short story. I enjoyed it. It definitely tied up a few things that were not answered at the end of the book. Um, and it was good. I, I did enjoy that. 
keeping with the series, we then moved on to book number five. Now, like I said, I already read book number five in April and I literally re-listened to it again in May, which is really interesting to do that because obviously reading it so close together, you notice different things on a reread, obviously. And listening to it all over again, again in, 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 with, with alongside reading the others in quick succession, it was very much, again, seeing the similarities between this female character who is the overprotective mother, who doesn't always make the sensible decisions. Um, and I enjoyed Kill Me and Met Again when I read it in April. I thought it was really, really page turning and gripping. I did, I did enjoy that. And I still think that it is that. Um, I marked the different aspects in Coppel slightly lower this time than I did in the first one, but it still came out as an overall four star. Um, and like I say, the plot itself, I did enjoy. I liked how that kind of all fit together. That was really good. The thing I, I've just got to say is that it's the characters that started to get annoying at this point because I feel like the, the main character in Kill Me Again is Maggie and she is a defence lawyer and obviously a very intelligent, well-educated lady. And some of the decisions she made were barmy to say the least um they just made no sense I, I she just kept coming up with more and more ridiculous reasons not to contact the police whereas if the police namely tom douglas if they had been contacted at an earlier point obviously it would be a much shorter book <laughs> but it got to the point where you're like you, these decisions are being made to lengthen the book that literally is how it felt because it was like there were certain things that would happen she would get threatening messages or things like that and you'd be like just contact the police you work in the law you know how these things work like why are you making such questionable decisions just in the oh I'm being loyal you know to my husband and my family and I don't want to cause anyone any upset kind of thing. I'm like you're a clever woman why are you being a twit and me and you and discuss these books in detail and it's just the things we kept coming back to was just like a lot of this plot is being driven by the female characters making weirdly dumb life choices i don't know if you just heard him chuckling over there i you know he agrees with me it's horror film logic <laughs> horror film logic that's his input that's fair horror film logic of there's someone creeping around my house let's go hide in the shower <laughs> you know stuff that doesn't really make sense um and like I say they're meant to be intelligent well-educated people and I just feel like they needed better reasons to not contact the police or needed better reasons to make other stupid decisions um than the ones given was our personal opinion anyway still enjoy the book but definitely starting to see repetitive writing patterns, character patterns, and it was starting to get a bit grating by this point in the series. I still enjoyed these books, but definite glaring errors, I think, made on the writer's part at this point. So we continued on and read The Sixth Window, which is book number six. And this one um, follows um, another mother with a young daughter who is making potentially really snap judgments and uprooting their lives and going to this place and not, really, not a very strong reason why um, because she now suspects her new partner of being into something fairly dark and twisted but by doing so is putting her actually in, in more jeopardy. Um, I was I felt like again I think the sixth window came out at a four star on call pile I'd be more tempted to bring it down to like a 3.5 um like gut feeling wise this is where sometimes call pile rates a little higher or the ratings end up a little higher than my gut tells me um definitely this series I would say is starting to get that way I feel like other aspects of the book are bringing up the mark and I it's just yeah anyway so I, in my gut, would say this is more of a 3.5, but it came out as a 4. We'll leave it there. Um, the character, again, the female character was making random life choices that I didn't feel were completely plausible. Um, overall, the plot was fine. It was quite interesting. But I do think the characters are the letdown in this series, which is disappointing. I feel like they just don't have enough justification to behave the way that they do. Um, that is something that could definitely 
improve it. Um, but that is as far as we got with our Rachel Abbott uh, sort of buddy read, reread situation this month. All of these came out as a four star on Coppel, some a higher four than others. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say dumb female characters is the drawback of this series. Dumb female characters. And they all seem to be mothers protecting their children. And, you know, deviate from that formula once in a while, you know. But that was those. They, like I say, they came out as decent enough reads. And I enjoy reading books along with my fiancé. He's he's very funny when he's very critical of things. And he, he's so detail-focused that he notices things that completely skim over my head. I'm more of a... I like the characters and the general vibe and stuff. And he notices little plot points that are so specific and I don't notice them. And he's like, but that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> but that's what you get when you, when you buddy read, you do notice different things. So it's been an enjoyable experience, despite the fact that I feel like the books are now starting to decline a little bit. Um, but that is how far we got through in May. So what we will do to round up this wrap up is go through the non-fiction that I read this month. So I read two non-fiction books this month, one with a four star read and one with a five star read. So the first one I'll talk about is I Am Not Your Baby Mother by Candice Brathwaite. And this was a fairly short um, book. I, I listened to it again on audio. I really like to consume non-fiction as an audio book. I find it a lot more palatable. And this is basically an insight into what it's like to be a black mother and the hardships faced by black mothers and also a cultural thing of being the difference between a mother and also like a baby mother like how it's obviously that's more of like a, an insulting term it's not like you know you're not like this like a partner you're essentially just this incubator for the child and you're you're just a baby mother kind of a thing um obviously she explains it a lot better than I did um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it. I think the fact that Candice Brathwaite, uh, I really enjoyed her writing. The narration was great in the audiobook. I really, really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot and how, you know, um, black mothers are statistically more likely to have complications and die during childbirth. And also kind of the a cultural um, stigma on mental health within the black community and kind of roles in families and lots of different things that I, it's just one of those things I, I really feel like it's something that people should kind of like learn about a lot more like I I am not kiddie minded I have no interest in being a mother at all so you might think why did you pick up a book about black mothers if you don't even want to be a mother yourself I still found her account really really interesting and it, like obviously she spoke about her children and her experiences giving birth and you know motherhood um but I just really enjoyed listening to her her opinions on things. I found her a very insightful um, person and I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend. I I really really enjoyed it even for someone who's not really interested in children. I found it to be a really really interesting book and it's just one of those things I'm trying to learn a lot more about kind of the differences faced by black people and um, learn a lot more about things that quite frankly a lot of us have been very ignorant of and I am glad I read it. It's not, obviously not one of the, the big names of you know I'm no longer talking to white people about race and things like that which are all my TBR as well. It's not one that I've actually seen um, recommended um, but I actually really enjoyed it. I found it very interesting and obviously it looked a bit more at the medical side of things which I, I naturally like. Um, but yeah, I found this to be a very interesting book and I would recommend. Sticking with the medical themed non-fiction, I also read my Tackle the TBR book for me, which was Pain and Prejudice by Gabrielle Jackson. Another audiobook. Um, I adored this book. So this book discusses kind of how the, the, how society has looked at differences in medicine um, between men and women, where are there are a lot of conditions that are predominantly affecting women, they don't get as much funding, uh, when pe women are describing things like chronic pain and they're just treated like they are hypochondriacs and they're not you know they're not to be taken seriously, it looked into the past um, things um, like hysteria um, the way that, that medicine over the years has looked upon women as subjects, um, shocking, utterly shocking, mind blowing, my jaw dropped in every chapter at some point in this book. I'm just, I'm getting so into reading about sort of more feminist literature and wow, just wow. 
Um, this was a recommendation from Jean Mingus from Jean's Bookish Thoughts and I highly recommend it as well. I'm telling other people I know to read it. I think it's fantastic and I learned so much from this book. Um, I think everyone needs to read it. Um, wow, <laughs> such a good book. So that was a very successful um, Tack on My TBR pick for for me. So that covers the 15 books that I read in May. Again, can we just reiterate how proud I am of myself? Um, and since we've finished on the Tackle the TBR book for me, let's just segue into picking the TBR book for June. Oh, so we'll grab, we shall grab the little jar. Um, I'm doing really well. I've like, I've, I'm, I've read every single prompt that I've picked from this jar so far, I have read. Some of them I've not read 100% in the right month, but they've all been read. So let's pick another prompt and this one is ah interesting okay ignoring my bad handwriting this is read a recent purchase before it becomes old news essentially stop it going on to the tbr of shame oh oh what could i read what could i read for that prompt there are so many books that I could read for that prompt. And I'm going to go with my most recent purchase. I bought a book literally two days ago. What book is more perfect to read it before it becomes old news than the most recent book that I bought? I'm going to go get it. So I'm back. So like I said, for this prompt, I am going to guinea pigs are having a moment. For this prompt, I'm going to read the most recent book that I've hauled. So recent, it's not been in a book haul, it's not been mentioned. I don't even think the vlog where I bought it is up yet. That might not even be up till the following weekend. This is recent. Um, this is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I've caught my hair in it. <laughs> so this book is a Greek myth retelling. I wrote this because it was recommended by a few different booktubers and also the beauty of this book is rather fabulous. I mean this could be a legitimate cover buy. It's just very pretty. Anywho, this I purchased at the weekend. This was my first foray into Waterstones. Um, I picked my hair up again with it. Um, since this whole reopening of shops, um, Ariadne is the Greek myth retelling of Cathesius and the Minotaur. And I I'm really keen on reading it. I think this will be really, really cool. So this one shall fit my prompt of Tackle the TBR for this month. And so we've come to the end of the video. So that's the all the books that I read in May. This is the book that I'm adding to my TBR for June. June is also whatever a thon, so that's gonna be added to my whatever a thon TBR. And yeah, that's all uh, that's all gone rather swimmingly. Let's hope that I can continue to read, maybe not at this level. This is a lot of books, but if I can if I can still read a good chunk, I can definitely read more than four in a month at this current rate. Um, although admittedly. I am obviously filming this in June and I've, I've so far read one. So we're definitely more back at the, the slow pace for June, naturally. Um, but I'm determined to pick up the pace for the rest of the month. So um, if you would like to see my vlogs of my reading in June, I will link um, a couple of them up there if I remember to do so. I'm vlogging every week for whatever thon, every day throughout the month of June, basically. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see you another one very soon. Bye.